Okay there, so we're now live on the webinar, the Pressure Point Fighting webinar. Thank you very much and um, hope uh, everybody enjoys what we've got to say today. I've got a, a whole heap of questions that have been sent in already, so I promise people that I'll try and get through those. Uh, there's a couple that have asked questions that I can't really do under this format because I've got no one here to demonstrate on. So sorry about that, but uh, we will answer those for you at some stage, I can guarantee you. Okay, one of the um, biggest things we've got to get rid of is some of the myths surrounding pressure points, okay? Because um, a lot of the questions that I've had are about basically these myths. So I can answer these myths, which will answer many, many questions that you either have, may have, or that somebody's already asked, or you may have wished you'd asked. Okay, so many people have trained elsewhere in pressure points, and they've been told, informed, misinformed, certain supposed facts about pressure points. Things like polarities reversing, and uh, if you hit with this side of your hand on this side of the head, or this part of your hand on the other side of the head, then things change around, and you've got to think about this, and think about something else, and all this other stuff. I couldn't keep up with what they were talking about, and I know the science behind it all very, very well. So, there you go. All of that sort of stuff, basically, it's a load of cobblers. Polarity doesn't change. Nothing changes depending on which side of the hand you use and which side of the body you use. Okay, because it's only a comparison between. Let me explain that. When people are talking about polarity and stuff, they talk about opposites, yin and yang. Well, it's only um, an opposite. A left, right, up, down, front, back, something like that. Um, it appears that some people are having problems seeing stuff, Robert. It should be there. Um, have you tried YouTube? Stuff like that, it should be there as well. Nobody else has I've not had any other problems reported. Um, we can check for you. I can get my people to check. But I've had nothing reported as a problem, so everything should be fine. Um, it appears to be Everything appears to be working okay. So um, maybe try, all you have to do, Robert, is press play on the, if you're watching on the website, press play. For other people, you just press play and it'll come up. I can see it on there all working. My people are on it. Okay, so a lot of these myths, things like the hand stuff and polarity and all that sort of stuff, it's just comparing opposites. They're just opposites. It's, um, it's as simple as that. So nothing changes, okay? It's only when you make the comparison from one to another. So if you're looking at it, watch Nelly, if you're watch, looking at something, it's the opposite of left to right, front to back, up to down, something like that. It's literally only when you make the comparison at that moment in time. Because what's left to right one way around is right to left another way around, depending on which way you're looking at it. Okay, so don't worry about things like polarity and opposites and all that kind of stuff. It's purely when you make that comparison. Okay, so some other myths that people have written in about are um, they've heard that on gallbladder 20 at the back here, they've heard that it doesn't work if the opponent is bent forward. Okay, well, have you tried it? All right, of course it works. Things don't change just because you've moved into a different place, okay? All right. Things change if you alter angles and things like that. When, when you look at things like a lock, right? If somebody's trying to put a lock on your arm and your arm changes, then of course the lock's a straight arm lock is not going to work if your arm's bent. All right. But you know, a lock is a lock is a lock. It doesn't matter whether you. are one way up, upside down, the other way round, left, right, whatever. A lock is a lock is a lock is a lock. So if you're putting on top wrist lock, 
it wouldn't matter if you put it on top wrist lock from side position from top from saddle from uh, underneath whatever if you've got the arm there and you put the lock on it's still a lock okay the position of the other person may have changed but the lock hasn't changed and so it is with areas of the body okay just because you move your head one way doesn't mean that one part of your body is moved it's still where it was it's still where it was on your body so it can still have the same effects okay another big myth that we've heard is that uh, you can hit points too hard pardon absolute rubbish right it's a bit like saying you're in a fight and you can punch somebody too hard I understand you could punch somebody too hard and have all sorts of problems but we're not talking like that the more impact you put on something the greater the effect as simple as that so you don't negate the effect of points by hitting them harder you make them work even better by hitting them harder of course you hit as hard as you possibly can at that moment in time it's as simple as that so another myth was that Basically, why do we see so many demos where you're just touching or prodding or whatever, blah, blah, blah. You wouldn't do it like that in a fight. Duh. Of course you wouldn't do it like that in a fight. If you genuinely think that somebody's going to fight with prods and presses and touches and be talking to the camera whilst they're doing it and doing it slow and gentle, if you seriously, seriously even consider for one moment that that's how people fight, then you need a lot of help. Probably more help than anybody can give you. Because if that's what you seriously think a fight is, you're in for a rude awakening when you get one. Right? There is such a thing as teaching speed and power, learning speed and power, training speed and power, testing speed and power, and fighting speed and power. Okay? And if you don't understand those differences, then you need to start learning more and more and more. We can help you with that. Okay. The reason something is done light and slowly is so that people don't get hurt and so that people watching can be educated because it's a teaching environment. When you're teaching somebody a technique, let's make it a nice, simple, easy one, a jab. You don't go out there, jab as hard, as fast as you can, smash somebody in the face. You go, okay, buddy, get on with it. That's how you do a jab. With no instruction whatsoever. You just do it as hard and as fast as you possibly can. Nobody's going to learn, are they? Things are done slowly to teach. Okay? Of course you don't fight like that. Another myth. There's too many of them. Um, what else? Oh, yes. Another one. Is... Uh, do they work in grappling? Of course they work in grappling. The body is the body is the body, okay? It doesn't matter whether you're grappling, striking, both, whatever it is. The body is the body, okay? Asking if points work in grappling is like saying, does striking work? Do locks work? Well, a lock only works if you put it on. And strikes only work if you land them. Simple as that. So if your strikes don't land, they don't work. If your lock doesn't go on, locks don't work. If you can't take somebody down, takedowns don't work. See how ridiculous it is? Okay. Points are weak areas of the body that are there all the time. If you understand how and why they work and how and why the body works and how and why techniques work they're there all the time and they work all the time okay which leads me on to some other questions um it's from mark uh he's asking about do points work on everybody or have you got people it doesn't work on and all that sort of stuff okay i actually covered this when i was chatting with uh, tony Chikini the other week Never had anybody apart from one person. And this one person had a car accident when they were a child and they had severe damage to their nervous system. They didn't feel what 
everybody else called they didn't even know if it could be called pain because they don't know what they're supposed to be feeling they could they used to win bets putting cigarettes out on their body because they just didn't even flinch okay so this particular guy um you know he basically said he didn't feel pain but the weird thing was that when you do the stuff on him with the points involved his body reacted in the same way so the knees would buckle he would collapse he would fall over or whatever it may be but he didn't perceive what we would call pain because the nerve receptors were so badly damaged he didn't get it but the interesting thing was that his body was still reacting the same way as somebody let's say normal for a second somebody without that damage okay so very strange but that's the only one now there are reasons for this okay the reason and i covered this again with tony the reason that people get this what they call i've heard them all say it, this bell curve of distribution of people that points work on where they've got you know 20% it doesn't work on, 20% it works amazing on, and then this little curve in the middle where it's everybody else, where it's up and down. We don't have that bell curve as such, or we do, but it's at the end where it's working on everybody, and there's some people it just works even better on, and some people it just works really good on. Okay? Now, there's a reason for that. And the reason for that is that we don't teach pressure points the way everybody else seems to. From what I've seen everywhere else, I know most of them, or their offspring, right, is that they teach pressure points as a standalone art. Doing it like that is destined for failure. That's an absolute guarantee you will fail. You'll be at it for years on end and you'll find you've got all sorts of problems, loads of people it doesn't work on, this it doesn't work on, that person it doesn't work on, that one it works okay on. You'll have all sorts of problems and all sorts of ups and downs with it, and all of those myths that we've heard before, you'll start to think some of them might even be true, because you're all the different problems that you're going to have. We don't teach it that way, never have done, never will. We teach it, and I've said this since day one with people, it's an addition to that which you already know and, a, and an addition to that which we teach you. Now, it's important you understand this because this is what separates the men from the boys, so to speak. This is what separates somebody who can make them work on everyone easy from people who say, oh, don't work on you, you're a non-responder. Give me somebody else to demonstrate on. All right. We teach what we call players, technique enhancers, what, whatever you want to call it, the constituent parts that make a technique work. This is the key. I keep telling people this and people don't listen. Please listen and understand. Whatever your technique is, it can be broken down into the constituent parts, the little bits that make that technique work. Balance, timing, distance, strength, speed, power, angulation, body physics, body dynamics, body mechanics. Okay, all lots and lots of things. There's, there's loads and loads of them. Okay, now, once you understand those principles upon which every technique is made, now obviously some techniques use different principles or more of than others in, in different areas. Once you understand those principles upon which all techniques are built, you can look at any technique, understand the principles, understand the constituent parts that are making that work, identify them all, and then with the information that we give you, you can improve on that technique by the addition of other technique enhancers from here or there and everywhere, or merely working the ones that you know of better into that technique and then adding the points at the end. 
Once you do it that way, the points always work every single time. And not only that, they suddenly magically appear for you. Why? Because your technique is more correct. Therefore, your opponent, whatever is going on, what's presented to you is the right point at the right time for the right technique. So once you understand all those principles, the points are just there. They're the icing on the cake. And that is what will make them extremely effective. Okay. Without doing it that way, you just told, there's a point over there, it's it, see what happens. There's a point over there, press it, see what happens. I've demonstrated this many, many times to people. I've been exactly on the right point. I know exactly what I'm doing. I'm exactly the right point. I'll press it as hard as I possibly can and nothing will happen. I said to you, that's because you're learning it that way. Now, show you the way I would teach you it. Here's where you would be when you activate it. This is how touch and they fall over. Or they're screaming in pain or whatever it may be. With nowhere near the strength, nowhere near, nowhere near. Obviously in a fight, you'd put all your strength in. All right, let's go back to the first method we were talking about. But that's the difference between using points on their own and learning it that method and learning it the way we teach it. And it's a very, very important, very, very important distinction between the way we teach it and the way I've seen everybody else I can think of teaching it with the odd exception, like one exception, Dragon Society. Okay, so some other good questions that have come in. Oh, sorry, Robert, yes, you are on the right track, yes. Yeah, there's always lots of things going on with electronics and stuff. Okay, so, yeah, another one, good questions. The best way to learn without a partner, especially during these times, obviously, like anything, anything to do with combat, you need partners. You need training partners to learn properly. Of course you do. doesn't matter what it is. Right? If you can't do judo without somebody to throw or to be the one being thrown. You can't do locks properly without having a limb to lock or, and having your limbs locked to learn all the defenses and stuff like that. So like anything, of course, of course, you need training partners if at all possible. Having said that, some people are still at a stage where they don't have a training partner, so they have to train on their own. Can it be learned on your own? Yes, short answer. However, make no excuse for the fact that it's much more difficult to learn it on your own. Of course it is. Just like learning anything on your own is gonna be much more difficult. But if you've got experience in training, you've got experience in, let's say, striking, right? kickboxing, let's say. If you've got experience in kickboxing and you understand what you're doing, you can learn these principles. And what I would say to people is that whilst you're learning on your own, don't worry so much about the points, even though that's what we're teaching. Learn the principles that we're teaching you first, because that's the, what we say you should learn first. Those you can learn many, many, many of them on a good 65 to 75 percent of them, and there's about a hundred you can learn on your own. And they will stand you in great stead when it comes to having a training partner again outside of these COVID times all over the place. Because once you've got all of those principles, those technique enhancers, whatever you want to call them, players, blah, blah, blah. Some people understand them as players. Just think of it as the bits that make a technique work. Once you've got those embedded in and you can work them properly, then the points will start to appear. So in the background, whilst you're waiting to have training partners, you can start to learn where they are. You can just press and prod them on yourself and think, yeah, that's about right, that hurts, that hurts, that hurts, whatever it may be. And then using strong visualization while you're doing your pad work, bag work, whatever it is, you can start to think where they would be. 
but you can use that opportunity and think of it as an opportunity to really train and understand those players, those principles, those technique enhancers, because that is the critical part that you must get right, which is why our courses stress, please learn it in this order, because that is the way to progress the fastest. If you try to jump ahead, you'll miss out on a lot of the information. Then you'll find that the point's not working properly for you. Why? Because you jumped ahead to lesson 30 instead of doing lessons 1 to 29 first, because you thought you knew it when you didn't. Which brings on to another thing. People thinking they know it. Reminds me, back in the day, Richard Cottrell, but into what? I stole this from, from Richard. There's a saying, it might look the same, but it ain't. And that's a very, very important saying. It's very, very important in the martial arts. It might look the same, but it ain't. You can see two people doing a jab or whatever. It might look the same, but one of them does a jab that'll take your face off, and the other one does a jab that you could walk through. But in thin air, it might look the same, but it ain't. And that's a very critical thing with what we do and what we teach. It may look the same, but it ain't. Feeling is very, very different. Feeling is very, very different. Okay, some more questions. This is a very, very common question that we get. Okay, and I don't mean to be blase or flippant in the answer to this one, but the question is how long to get to black belt? Well, how long's a piece of string? Okay, there's so many factors that determine how long that takes, just like in anything. How long does it take to do this? How long does it take to do that? Okay. It depends on so many factors. One, are you good enough? Because if you're good enough today, you'd get a black belt today. If you're good enough in 10 years, you get one in 10 years. It's not a question of time served. It's a question of ability level. Okay. So all of our stuff is about ability level. We don't go into, you've got to do two years to the next down, three years and four years and five, and all that sort of stuff. No. That's, to me, that's a load of old cobblers. It's about ability level. So whenever you're at the right level, that's the grade that you're at. It doesn't matter whether it, well, we, we only have a few belts anyway. You start at white, you go to um, blue, brown, Black. that's it once you get through you're away that's it so whatever level you're at that's it that's the level you're at so the biggest problem that people have is that they're already say a second third fourth fifth sixth down somewhere else and they expect to be given a black belt when they move across to somebody else we don't we operate that way if you're good enough you get one if you're not you don't End of story. No ifs, no buts, no maybes. No time served. No here's a few quid. None of that rubbish. If you're good enough, you get it. If you're not good enough, you don't. Everything's out there. And our black belt course, everything's laid out for people fully from right from the beginning, right the way through and beyond. We add more and more stuff in there for you all the time. That's it. There it is. Get on with it. If you can do it, you can do it. If you can't, you can't. Okay, it's that simple. So um, we hear all the time from people things like, uh, I know that, I know that, I know that, I know that. Let me see it. I'll tell you if you know it or not. Again, it's about people's perceptions on these sort of things. A lot of people perceive themselves to be at a certain level or perceive themselves to know and understand something, but they may not. They may well do, but they may not. But we will be honest with you at all times and let you know exactly where you are and exactly what areas you need to work on. Okay, so in answer to that question that everybody seems to want to know, well, how long will it take me? It depends on you on how much work you put in and how good you are and how quickly you absorb the information. It's as simple as that. If you put in no effort each week, don't expect a black belt at the end of the year. 
if you put in loads of hours and you train diligently and you're really good, then you can expect one pretty quick, wouldn't you? Depends on the level. Okay, some other questions that we get. Um, oh, yeah, Rex on. You've asked this question. It's been brought to my attention. You've asked this many times, apparently, and we've yet to answer it properly for you. Maybe we didn't understand the questions. Um, knife defense. Okay, let me just take a sip of tea before I get onto that one. Okay, knife defense. I'm going to be brutally honest about knives, weapons, all sorts of stuff here. Okay. We don't teach knife defense per se. And I'll explain why. When it comes to a self defense situation, you have to assume, you have to assume that anybody and everybody involved in that situation has a knife, has a weapon of some description, whether it's a knife, a bottle, a glass, whatever it may be, you have to assume they've got some kind of weapon. Therefore, you cannot allow them to strike you. You cannot allow them to grab you. You cannot allow them to grab and strike you. You cannot allow them to get close enough to do damage with that weapon. Having said that, you never know what's going to happen in these situations. Somebody could be on you before you know. They could be grabbing you from behind. You could be sat down. There's million and one ways where somebody could be grabbing hold of you or actually got hit you. The sucker hit first of all, whatever. I understand all of that, of course. Right? There's a, you can never allow for every situation. These are general rules. So, having said all that, if a weapon is pulled on you, then you need distance okay. and you need barriers. Right? Now, if it's at all safe to do it, then obviously the best distance is as far away as possible. All right? A weapon of any kind is scary stuff that you just... Okay? The other thing is, you may not be able to get away. Things things fall into simple categories when you work it out. Can you get away, yes or no? Yes, you go. Can you get away, yes or no? No, right. You've got to stay and fight it out. Do you have a weapon, yes or no? Yes, get your weapon if you can. No, right, you need to find one if you can. If you can't, you need to get a barrier. Can you get a barrier, yes or no? All these things, all these quick, 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 yes or no has got to be, and these can be done instantly. You know straight, you know before, you don't even need to ask yourself the question, have you got a weapon? Basically, the only question is, can you get away? If you can't get away, you've got to be looking around for some way to create the right distance, the right angle, to be able to hit them so hard they're going to wake up for a week of Sundays. There is no point or little point in trying to disarm an armed assailant. Okay, try it in the gym with the armed assailant not really trying to hurt you and see how difficult it is to disarm them. When we're working with police and security, which we work with all over the world, you know, we, our stuff's required learning at about 100 and something police academies now. There's 25, 30,000 security officers and police officers a year go through our defensive tactics training. So, you know, it's there for a reason, it works. Disarming is something that police security may have to do at certain times, right? but they've got lots of other things with them. They've got a belt full of weapons. They've got their sprays. They've got their guns. They've got their tasers. They've got their batons. They've got all sorts of stuff at their disposal, which you haven't. And more often than not, they've got numbers, which makes a big difference as well. So when it comes to weapons, we don't actively teach defense per se. We show you some things that may help, but we don't call it weapon defense. It's just defense because they may not have a weapon in that hand, but you'd still be doing roughly the same sort of thing anyway. Because if my arm was up, for example, and you jammed my arm and smacked me in the face, this arm's not doing anything. So it doesn't matter if it's got a glass in it, a knife in it, stick in it whatever if it's jammed and you hit me this is of no threat if it's out here ready to go and you're coming at me it's a threat 
So there's all those sort of little things that uh, you need to work on. But you just a lot of it is common sense. A lot of it is common sense. But essentially, the way I look at it and the way I teach it and the way we, we tell everybody is that if you've got an unconscious attacker, he's no longer a threat. If the attacker is unconscious, he's no longer a threat. Well, that's what we say to everybody. That's what you've got to do. Okay. Now, let's build on that, and I'll tell you roughly what we do for police and security, and obviously for anybody who does one of our defensive tactics stuff. If you've got a weapon yourself, then you need to make sure that that weapon isn't taken off you, because one of the biggest problems that the police have all over, the ones that have any weapons, especially guns, is that the, the, one of the biggest causes of injury to the officers is when their own weapon is taken off them. The, let me say that again. One of the biggest causes of injury to law enforcement officers is when their own weapon is taken off them and used against them. That's a horrible thought. So one of the things that we teach for weapons is your own weapon retention and when to draw and how and when to draw. Okay, and that's a very important skill that people need to understand. And learning that skill of when to draw for yourself and how it enables you to spot when it's going to happen on somebody else. So you can get in there before they can draw. You've got to look out for the signals that somebody's looking for a weapon. Obviously, if somebody's so blatant, they go and reach out like that to go for something. It's pretty obvious what's going on. But there's lots of very, very subtle keys that you can learn from your own training in effect, if you like being the bad guy, drawing the weapon, having a weapon, that you will understand the defense against somebody who may or may not be about to draw. Okay, because there's a lot of tells, a lot of signals that you can get from that. So I'd say learn our stuff of how to draw, when to draw, to learn when to spot it. Now, having said that, you've got weapon retention. So we basically teach people that they're in here. So if this is my weapon hand here, whether it's a baton, a knife, gun, whatever it may be, bottle, ashtray, doesn't matter, same thing. Empty hand, same thing. When you're in cloak, you're in here. If my hand is out like this and you grab it and pull on it, you might be able to pull my weapon hand away. I can't reach it or get to it to, to swap over and stab you or whatever. And all of a sudden, I'm in a lot of trouble and I'm losing my weapon, you get it and stab me with it or shoot me or whatever. If it's in here, it's in my area of strength and it's very, very difficult for you, even if you grab me, to pull it away. You won't get it away. You'll move the whole of my body before you before you get my arm out. Once I'm in here, then I've got my weapon protected. I've got coverage on it, whether I'm here like this, or like this, or like this, whatever. Anything you grab, it's just rolling elbows over and just firing in powerful elbows as hard and as fast as you possibly can that go sort of think of them like um, almost like an overhand punch so it's pop 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 with the elbows you get room straight away so if this is a gun in here whatever and you turn the elbow over you've got your shot if it's a knife you'll turn your elbow over and you can stab cut slice whatever it may be bat on anything you will get space you'll get time by just getting it in tight and rolling elbows it's a great drill so just think of your elbows as boxing punches which is another thing that we teach elbows to punch so think of your elbows as, as a jab across left hook top hook hook shovel hooks shovel hooks uppercuts uppercuts so you're in here tight you can jab cross hook and then you've got to do the movement as well. You're going to be slipping, sliding underneath, shovel hooks, overhands, all sorts of stuff. And that elbow movement will help you with your punches later on. But it's also the same as your weapon retention. So that's that's how we would say weapons. I hope that's given you enough Rex on, because I know you've asked that a lot about weapons, and I'm sorry that we wouldn't get there to you before. Okay, there's... Few other questions that we've got over here. These are questions that were sent in beforehand. If people are live and want a question answering, please just ask one because 
you know, we'll try and get them done for you. Okay, um, where are we? I've lost myself now. There's another one down here. Okay, yeah, when it comes to grappling, about do, do points work in grappling? And they're saying, I'm a grappler and somebody tried points on me and it didn't work. Okay, there you go then. Absolute proof. Points don't work in grappling because a, a grappler had somebody try points on him and it didn't work. Therefore, fresh points don't work in grappling because somebody had somebody try it. Right. I had somebody try to throw a punch once and they missed. Punching doesn't work. I had somebody try to throw a kick at me once. They missed. Kicks don't work. I had somebody try grappling with me once. Couldn't do it. Grappling doesn't work. See how ridiculous that argument is. Okay. I hear that sort of thing all the time. Somebody tried to do this. Somebody tried points on me. They couldn't make it work. Therefore, it doesn't work. Or I tried points on somebody. I couldn't do it. Therefore, pressure points don't work. Do you understand that that's the most ridiculous argument ever? All right. It's like saying, I don't know how to play chess. I'm good at tiddlywinks. I tried to play chess one day, couldn't play it, therefore chess doesn't work. Can't play that game, Tiddlewinks is best. It's absolutely ridiculous, right? To truly understand something and to make it work, I make no excuse for the fact that what we teach is a learned skill, all right? And if you don't understand it and are unable to do that learned skill, that doesn't invalidate the skill. It merely means you can't do it. Same in boxing, same in kickboxing, same in grappling, same in karate, taekwondo, kung fu, playing the clarinet, playing piano, anything. If you can't do it, it means you can't do it. It doesn't mean it doesn't work. Okay? So that argument is one that I hear all the time. I, I was speaking to Tony Cicchini on this only the other week, and it was somebody I, I'd seen who'd done one catch wrestling lesson with somebody who's not really any good at catch, trying to teach it, and, and he then, in his own mind, the whole of catch was invalid because the lesson he had wasn't very good. Okay, fine, don't do a catch. You've just, you know denied yourself a huge opportunity so when you listen to people say things like that remember that you could be denying yourself a big opportunity when you listen to people like that i'll give you another case in point about um how these sort of things suddenly get some kind of credibility somehow i remember years ago somebody wrote about what we were doing and me in particular and he started off with Stupid stuff doesn't work. It's a load of bullshit. His pressure point stuff doesn't work. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. La, 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 like that, nonstop. So obviously, somebody's a bit upset. Then he said, went on to say that he'd been to one of our seminars and that because, now listen very carefully to this, he'd already put four or five lines of pressure points don't work. Because. Here we get this. He came to the seminar, allegedly, I don't remember this guy, and said that when I went around helping people, showing them the techniques, he said that I touched him on the arm, it hurt like hell, and it made him fall over, and he didn't want to carry on training that day because his arm hurt that much. I said, hold on a minute. He's on four lines of saying fresh points don't work and it's bullshit. Then you just said that I touched you on the arm, and you fell over and it hurt too much, and you couldn't carry on. So I find a bit odd. So you get people like that. I don't believe the guy was ever there. I don't remember this guy at all, but that's what he wrote. So when you see all these sort of things, you've got to, you know, use some common sense with it. All right. So look at who's dismissing something or saying it's good and see what they're really like. And then make your mind up. Don't just take one person's word for something because they may have no experience in it. If I turn around and said that that piano, don't work that piano, I tried it, all I got was plink, plonk, plink, plonk out of it. 
all these people reckon they can play tunes like the old cobblers nobody can play a tune on a piano forget it and so i mean that's the kind of thing that's going on or if i said the piano is out of tune i wouldn't know right simple as that right so those are the sort of things you got to look at and you got to work out for yourself and understand and that they're inherent in the martial arts don't know why it's just one of those things it's just you know my dad's bigger than your dad kind of thing happens all the time and it's a crying shame unfortunately okay so that's some of the main questions i've been waffling on now for 40 minutes or so um there was a couple of other things that i wanted to let you know about okay shameless sort of stuff now shameless plug here all right our pressure point black belt course is and i yeah i'm gonna blow my own trumpet on this one it's astounding it is the best course you'll find on the internet bar none end of story that's it all right if you want to really study properly obviously we can't train together as things stand but the second best thing is to basically have a virtual classroom so the, the lessons are all high def multiple camera angles they were filmed in uh where are we now 21 so 20 so 2019 2020 all right top quality laid out in the exact order that you need everything explained everything designed to be built in layers one after another there's a special offer on there's 18 dvds in total you can download each individual lesson if you want the lessons are very very high quality so even like a three or four minute lesson is, is huge it's high quality you can put it on your phone you put it on your tablet you put it on your computer on your tv i don't know tvs it works anyway we put it on our big one in there to check it so all of this stuff you can have the dvds or a usb stick there's hundreds of lessons i can't remember exactly how many but loads and we'll be adding more and more information in there for you as well different training tips and things like that and things to help you could also have a calls with me and you or small groups that other people don't get so there's lots and lots of other things that you get in there as well and we'll be adding and adding and adding now that when we say adding to it it doesn't mean you've got to learn this stuff to get to black belt level that's the syllabus for black belt this other information is just extra stuff that we'll just be giving you and feeding you training tips whether it be for fitness conditioning different types of scenarios and we'll also be answering questions so i think it's uh, the first thursday of every month i'll put out a video answering any of the questions and things like that and helping people when you're learning stuff you can do your uh, technique directly with me you can send it in blah 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 and i'll critique it with you it can be private it can be open for everybody however you want to do it my goal with it is to help you get to the highest possible standard that you can in the shortest possible time frame okay so that's it that black belt course seriously it, it's just the the best thing and let's say there's a special offer on it where you can just cash it out for a ridiculously low price or you can just pay monthly and off you go the cash out you've got it lifetime it's a one one time payment lifetime deal so can't say better than that and you get all the dvds and stuff um uh the monthly thing no okay so i don't think there's much else for me uh no don't miss grantham only family and friends of course but there you go so we're just asking if i miss my old hometown i don't miss england only family and friends and meeting up with people doing seminars and courses and things like that of course that's something i miss terribly because you know some of the finest people you'll ever meet are in martial arts absolutely some of the finest people you'll ever meet and it's an absolute honor and a privilege for me to be able to meet and train with these people all of you guys all around the world it's an absolute honor and a privilege for me to be able to train with you so that's from newark of course yeah the top training people there's so many great people that i've trained with okay big shout all right big mention then right phil bar amit johnny pants big paul all those people whip 
all those sort of guys, Nelly, Kelly, Powerhouse, Pete, all those sort of people from years ago, Jez, Tony, all those things, and, and others that I've, I haven't named them, sorry, but all those people, yeah, yeah, brilliant training partners. I've been very, very fortunate, very, very lucky. Anyway, we're coming up to the end now. I don't know how you've stuck with me. Well done for everybody who has. Uh, if you've got any other questions, send them in. We'll get them answered on the next one. We've got a series, letting you know now, we've got a series of podcasts coming up over the next few weeks, months, and so on and so forth with uh, me chatting with, talking to, and questions with lots of top guys in the martial arts and other fields that we'll be uh, having interviews with, chats with, and all sorts of stuff. We've got so much planned for you for this year. Okay, so much planned. It's going to be one hell of a ride, and I hope you'll join me on it. And get on that Black Belt program so I can really help you. Right, I'm off. Thank you very much. Time to finish my cup of tea. It's nearly 11 o'clock at night over here. Thanks very much. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thanks for your questions. And look forward to working with you and seeing, with you, seeing you and training with you as soon as. Thanks again. Bye-bye.